So I want to start my presentation uh, somewhere else, and I want to start started like 2,000 years ago. So within the next few minutes, I am going to give you the Cisneros family history going back 2,000 years or about 80 generations, and I'm going to do it all in about 20 minutes. Okay, then I will open it up to questions. Okay, so the, 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 first, the, the first question I normally get is where, the, where did the Cisneros come from? Well, uh, a few years ago, I actually had my DNA tested. And DNA testing is used for different reasons, but one of the things that you can find with DNA is that you can find out where your family originated. Uh, going through, you know, studying, uh, doing a gene analysis. And what they do is they, they will take a sample from you and uh, test it, and with that, uh, they can tell you uh, where you originated. And it will tell you, if you do what's called a Y DNA testing, uh, they'll test you and they, can, and, uh, and they can tell you who your father was, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, and so on and so on like going on the Cisneros line for as far back as 2,000 or, or more years. What I just, the reason that I did that was because I knew that our, our family in New Mexico, our Cisneros family, was mestizo. I knew that we were a combination of, of Native American and Spanish. But I, didn't, I did not know whether the Spanish side was on the Native American side or on the, or on the, uh, or, or I didn't know whether whether it was our father or our mother that was Native American or Spanish. So now with DNA testing, if you are related to me... I am. Okay. <laughs> if you are related to me, then I can tell you that going back 2,000 years, our family actually originated in... Not Spain. Not Africa. Our family actually originated in Scandinavia. Yeah. So we're, Scandi we're Scandinavians. We, we look Scandinavian, I know. <laughs> and, and, the, and the reason for that is because the, our, our ancestors that lived in Scandinavia were what were, were, were called Goths. You've heard of the, the Gothic movement and all that. That has nothing to do with it. But, 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 but the... But the uh, But, but the Goths lived in, a, in, in Scandinavia 2,000 years ago. They were, they were mistreated by the Huns, another group from Eastern Europe. And they uh, got tired of being mistreated by the Huns because they themselves were a very peaceful people. And uh, so they became mercenaries of the Romans, of the Roman Empire. And the Romans sent them to Eastern Europe, to what is now Bulgaria and Romania, on the west coast of the Black Sea. And, but they were also mistreated by the Romans. And in the, and in the fifth century, they went as far as going to Rome, and they attacked Rome, and they defeated the Romans, but they were not interested in empire, so they kept moving on. By this time, the, the, the Goths that were going west were called Visigoths, and uh, they went all the way up into the Iberian Peninsula. The Iberian Peninsula is what is now Portugal and Spain, and so they settled the northern part of Spain, and this was in about the year uh, 500. So that's how our family started in Scandinavia, ended up in Spain. The, the Visigoths controlled Spain from from about 500 to the year 800, for about 300 years, until the Moors came in. You've, you've all heard of the Moors coming in and controlling Spain up until pretty much 1492. But the northern part of Spain, where our ancestors were, was never part of the Moorish Empire. The, the, the Visigoths, which became the Castilians, were never conquered by the Moors. So that's, that's the, the origin, the, the genetically, of our family history. From then, on, from then on, I do not know the family history. 
Uh, I have some ideas of where we came from and all that, but I only deal with Rick with uh, what I can prove. So I hear lots of stories about the origins of our family, our family name and all that. But unless we can prove it, I won't, I won't touch it, I won't deal with it. So the next time that I hear of a Cisneros individual uh, is with uh, the, the fourth voyage of Christopher Columbus in the ship that was, that was piloted by his brother Bartholomew Columbus or Bartolome Colon. And, in, and with Bartolomé Colón came a man, one of his captains was Juan Cisneros. And, I, and later, the same Juan Cisneros was also with the, with the conqueror, Hernán Cortés. And it was the same Juan Cisneros. And I suspect that that is the origin or the beginning of our family in the New World. The family was then in what is now Mexico City, or the Valley of Mexico for probably four generations before our ancestors came into New Mexico. When they came into New Mexico, when our family, when our Cisneros family came into New Mexico, I do not know. I suspect that they came in between 1630 and 1632 because by 1632 there is a record of a Diego de Cisneros who was uh, being hounded by the Inquisition in Santa Fe for basically messing around with some women there in Santa Fe. Uh, anyway, he, he, was, uh, he was given uh, the, 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 the Inquisition uh, official gave him a warning and sent him home and told him he stopped doing that. that. That basically was the end of that story. And I suspect that he was the, the, the father of the person that I definitely know was our ancestor and that was Bartolomé de Cisneros, who was born probably in Santa Fe and probably about 1630. That, that person, Bartolomé de Cisneros, I have more records on, and just recently I came across even still another record that, that uh, shows, that proves that he was the alcalde mayor or the chief, chief, magi chief ma uh, magistrate in uh, Zuni in 1658. And his brother Vicente, what, at the same time, was stationed over here at Abo. He had his farm not here at Abo because the, the soldiers were not re, were, were not uh, allowed to live within the pueblo. So his his uh, farm. He was a soldier, but he was also a farmer. Was in the area of what is now called Contreras, just outside of La Jolla. So 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 we know who, that our that Bartolomé was our ancestor. Now, his son was Antonio de Cisneros, and that is our next ancestor down the line. Antonio de Cisneros was born in Zuni, either 1660 or 1661. Either he didn't know when he was born, or, or he just, you know, just never gave us that information. He told us that he was born in Zuni, and he told us who his parents were, but he did not give us the year of his birth. So, Antonio de Cisneros, we have lots of records on. He was the Alcalde Mayor in Galisteo, he was an Alcalde Mayor in, in Zuni, at the same place where his father had been Alcalde Mayor. Uh, he married uh, a lady by the name of Josefa Luján in Santa Fe, in Santa Fe, on New Year's Day, 1694. And there's a, uh, on this poster over here, this chart over here, I have the first page of the marriage uh, petition for Antonio de Cisneros and Josefa Luján, and it gives the particulars of their of their marriage. It tells who they were. It tells that they were mestizo, castizo, that they were. It tells where they were from, who their parents were, and what other people in the community thought of them. Uh, so it goes on and on for 40, 40 pages. Okay, so that's Antonio de Cisneros. We have, I don't have time to get into any detail on him, but there's a lot of information on him, and different campaigns, and lots of, lots of things that he did. The next person down the line was Felipe Neri Cisneros, born in uh, Santa Fe, 1702. That's uh, the last born child of, uh, of Antonio Cisneros and Josefa Luján. Uh, he married a, a name by, uh, uh, he married a lady by the name of Maria, and she has some other surnames, but her, but her father's name was, her father's surname was Afan 
de Rivera. So she was a Maria Afan de Rivera. Uh, next down, then we have again more information on him from the Santa Fe and, and uh, northern New Mexico area. The next one down the line is Menegindo Cisneros, born in, uh, in where our family lived for 100 years, almost exactly 100 years. And this was the place called Nuestra Señora de la Soledad, which was uh, north of San Juan Pueblo, north of Española, we know that area. Uh, and the, the, the place eventually came to be called La Villita. So when you're going up towards Taos and you come to this place uh, that's right next to Alcalde, there's a place called La Villita, which is next to Los Luceros. That is the place that our ancestors lived in for 100 years. Okay, so we have, we have deep roots up there in, in northern New Mexico. Uh, up in northern New Mexico was born Jose Maria de Jesus Cisneros, Jose Maria. And uh, he was born there at La Soledad, Nuestra Señora de la Soledad, in 1809. Long time ago, the same year that Abraham Lincoln was born. Uh, he uh, was born, I believe it was 18 days after his father had uh, had been had died at the, at the Taos Pueblo. I don't know how he died at Taos Pueblo, but that's where he died at Menegildo. And so it was it was Jose Maria that brought the family here to La Rio Bajo, but he was only a child at the at the time. It was actually his mother Maria Rita Lucero and her new husband Tomas Sanchez that brought the family to uh, Valencia and then to Casa Colorada. Casa Colorada being the place where where Inez and I live now, uh, just south of Belen. And so the family has roots there also. That's where uh, Jose Maria was raised, and that is where uh, their first son, Juan Jose Cisneros, was born in 1834. And he married there a lady by the name of Viviana uh, uh, Pino and in 1850. Both of them were 15 years old at the time. So. Where am I now? So, Jose Maria. So, in 1854, there was a, uh, what, what was called a hundred years flood in Casa Colorada. And the family was forced to move to lower, to higher ground because all the acequias had been washed out. It had rained for days and days without, without let up. And everything was destroyed. So, a lot of the families decided to move towards the mountains. So, they came to the area of Manzano, uh, La Royal Colorado and, and those other communities that are just, just a few, few miles from here. We're just six miles, seven, eight miles from here. And uh, so the family lived there for a while. By the time of the Civil War, our family was actually living in the place called La Salada, which is just like a suburb of Choli. You know where Choli is now? Okay, so the, just, just south, just west of there. Just about a mile west of there is a place called La Salada, which is where the, the Tenabo, near the Tenabo ruins are. And uh, our ancestors, according to the historical record, were there for during the Civil War because it was when Jose Cisneros and his father-in-law, Mariano Pino, that were in the military during the Civil War, they were Civil War soldiers, uh, which is you don't, you don't hear about that in the records that, that our ancestors actually fought in the Civil War. Well, they did. Uh, well, no, they were actually all on the, on the Union side. Yeah. They, uh, there were some that were on the rebel side, on, on the Confederate side, but our families were always on the Union side, on the winning side. <laughs> so anyway, from... Uh, from, from La Salada, the family ended up, uh, went back to uh, Arroyo Colorado, where they also had farms and, 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 uh, and their, they had farms, they had animals, goats and sheep and cows and whatnot. And all of that time they had been grazing this land, this very land over here, around the ruins. Even, even before they settled here, they, they were already grazing over here. But in, uh, according to a, a a Swiss anthropologist who was studying the area here in, in the 1880s, he wrote an article and he said that the Cisneros people here that had taken him around to show him around, 
had, had told him that, that they had actually permanently settled here in April of 1869. So we, so what what had ha what has happened is that we started kind of started out over here in Naboo in the 1600s, and by 18, 18 uh, did I say 1869? Yeah. Uh, was it 1869 or 1879? I'm getting a little confused. 1869? 1869. Yes, after civil. By April of 1869, our, our family was already permanently here in this area. Okay? And so this is where, I don't know whether Joaquin, the next person down, the son of Juan Jose, was actually born uh, uh, in Arroyo Colorado or in uh, Casa Colorada, but he, he was not born in Arroyo. I asked my grandpa Pula where his father was born, and he, he didn't remember, he didn't know. I asked my uncle Fred, Tio Federico, if he knew where his dad was born. He said, no, I don't know. It was, it was either Casa Colorada or Arroyo Colorado. And he is the only person going back several generations that I don't know, that I don't have a birth record for. Uh, from his, uh, from his uh, marker at the cemetery, it says that he was born in 1857 but it doesn't say where he was born, okay? Escritula, the next one down, was born in the world. That's our, our, my grandfather, the grandfather to a lot of people here. The father to the tios over here uh, was actually born in the world, born in the house that uh, Eliseo and Ernie live in now, in that very same house. Uh, and I forgot to say that that house is very, very historical because that is the house that belonged not only to Joaquin, uh, Cisneros, our great-grandfather in Trinidad, Tafoya, his wife, but it actually belonged to Joaquin's grandmother and grandfather, Mariano Pino and Eulogia Baca. They were the first ones there. Uh, and uh, Joaquin was raised with his grandmother, just as Silvestre was raised with his grandmother, in the very, very same house. So very, very historical. Uh, so Escipula was born there, my father was born there, and, uh, and I don't know whether all the uncles were born there. I assume that they were uh, born in Abo. I think all of them were, right? Okay. Okay, uh, okay Uncle Benny Avenicio was actually born in La Tijera, but, uh, but that, that was just a... Uh, that was... That was, <laughs> yeah, that, that was just a... Accident. <laughs> That, that was a summer resort. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so what I, but my, my point here is that, is that we have we have roots here. Uh, we you know very deep roots here. Uh, there's a lot more history that I, that that I have not covered. Uh, but uh, you know I'm willing to share that with you. Uh, I I failed to mention uh, lots of things, but one of the things I wanted to mention that uh, Betty I think reminded me of. She told me that she had. Reading, she was reading a book by uh, Baker Murrow, who's a landscape historian from the uh, University of New Mexico. And I attended his lecture about a month ago, and he was talking about different topics, topics from different books that he has written. And I've never met this man before, and I still haven't met him. But he came up, he, t he told the audience there was something very interesting. He said, he was talking about wheat and all the different uh, crops that came that were brought into New Mexico. And he said, I studied, I was studying in Abo, and uh, I was studying with some other uh, historians, ethnobiologists, and, and all of these scientists. And after all this study, we came to the conclusion that the wheat tortilla was invented in Abo. <laughs> This would have been in the, place in, the, in, in, the, in the 16 in the 1600s. Yeah, it's never been published before, so I'm going to get a hold of them and get more get more information on that. But I thought that was a you know real interesting uh, point there that, that the tortilla was actually invented right here in the Can you imagine that the, the wheat tortilla, the, the wheat tortilla. So um, the, yes. You mentioned that we found Bartolome. Oh yeah, uh, thank you, Douglas. Yeah, no, we we actually found. Uh, I don't know whether all of you know what inscription rock or el morro is, but it's a it's a very historic rock 
mountain hill or whatever that's uh, uh, in western New Mexico uh, near Rema, uh, south, south of, it's a national monument. But anyway, it has inscriptions of, of people that went by there and they, they graffitied the rock by, you know, in the 1500s and 1600s and 1700s and 1800s. And finally, the national government took over in about 1908, I think it was, and they did not allow anyone to graffiti the rock anymore. But on that, on that very inscription rock was the inscription of our ancestor, Bartolomé de Cisneros. It's, a, it's abbreviated to it say B-M-E Cisneros, and Cisneros with an S, incidentally. Uh, and then it says Paso por aquí, which is a kind of standard. It either says Paso por aquí or Por aquí Paso. But I, wait a minute, I think it says Por aquí Paso. Yeah, but it's Bartolomé de Cisneros. And he didn't date it, but uh, we know that he was in that area, he was the Alcalde Mayor in that area uh, uh, as early as 1658, probably earlier than 1658, and as late as uh, 1662, 1662. So around that time period, he was out there graf doing graffiti on, uh, on that rock. And, and it's still there, but you can barely, barely see it. Uh, 20 year, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you can see it very clearly. But now, because of uh, the weather changes and acid rain and all those things, you can barely see it anymore. But fortunately, there are a lot of written records that we have, and like I said earlier, on Dr. Lomedes Cisneros, and Antonio, and, and Merejindo, and Jose Maria, and Felipe uh, Neri, and uh, all the people that I mentioned that are direct ancestors. We have lots of records on them. And I've been digging up more records, and still a lot more. And one of these days, I hope to uh, rewrite a book that I wrote on the family history about 17 years ago. Uh, I'd like to redo that because I have so much more information to share now. So basically, that's it. Uh, I go. All right. Uh, is it true that there's stories about our family taking sheep all the way from New Mexico, all the way to California and Mexico? And what year was that? The, 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 the two ancestors that, that I know were were what were called fleteros, well, they were fleteros, which uh, were uh, fleteros are. Uh, uh, Freighters, they're, they're, they carry freight uh, on the Camino Real from here to uh, Independence, Missouri. We have record of that. And then uh, Jose Maria, we know, I haven't found the documentation, but uh, this is a story that uh, our, that Teo Federico told me anyway. And uh, probably, I don't remember whether Grandpa Pula told me the story or not, but Jose Maria, who was uh, Grandpa Pula's great-grandfather, yeah, great grandfather, uh, and some other people from here, from this area, actually uh, drove sheep from here to the area of San Francisco, California, during the time of the Civil War, and right after, well, no, right before the, the Civil War, and uh, during the time of the Civil War, they would they would buy the sheep over here, or they would grow their own, their own sheep over here, and uh, would buy them for about 25 cents a head, and by the time they got to San Francisco, the San Francisco area, it would take them two years. And so they would lose a lot of sheep along the way, but in the meantime, they would get a brand new crop of sheep. So that by the time they got to the mining camps, the gold mining camps, and the, yeah, the, the, the gold rush in, the, in San Francisco, they, had, they were able to sell the sheep for $24, $25 a head. So they made, they made pretty good money. And on the return trip, it didn't take them that long because they were able to take the stagecoach, the Butterfield, from uh, the San Francisco area, Sacramento area, to uh, Mesilla in southern New Mexico. And then from there, I'm not sure how they got, got back home. But, uh, but they made pretty good money doing that uh, uh, freighting between here and, uh, and uh, Independence, Missouri, and also driving sheep to uh, California. The, 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 the Cisneros, uh, our, our families are mestizo. They're, they're mestizo because they, when, when they came from Spain, like most families, like most, most, it was mostly men that came from Spain, okay? And so what they did when they came to, they got to Mexico, it's not called Mexico, it's called New Spain then, they married Indian women. And uh, our ancestor, 
probably, our first ancestor probably married an Indian woman in Mexico City because that's where the family started out. And I say uh, Mexico City because when we've done the DNAs for a lot of the Hispanic families in New Mexico, we're finding that the Indian is not from Indian from, from like Pueblo Indian because there was a law that said that you could not marry Pueblo Indian. But you could, back in Mexico, you could marry the, the Indians that lived in the different barrios in the Mexico City and the Valley of Mexico. So we're mestizo, we're, we're mixed. And, and the record is very clear on that. If you read that uh, little thing up there, just that first page, it says mes mestizo. Well, it says that Antonio was castizo. Castizo meant that his grandmother was, was uh, Indian, okay? But the Indian was from, not, not from New Mexico, but from Mexico. They were called uh, Ladinas. They're called Ladinas because most of these Indian women that they married were, had been educated in the convents in Mexico City, so they could read and write. Almost all of them were literate, even as early as the early 1500s. The other, the other influence, which I have not found in our family, but that, are, that would make us also Native American on one side, is, is uh, something called Genizaros. Genizaros were Plains Indians there were Pawnees, Utes, Comanches, uh, Iowas, uh, those Indian tribes from the plains that were captured by the Spanish, that were traded back and forth, and they were brought up as, when once they came, brought them back into New Mexico, they were brought up as, as being Spanish. And, uh, after a while, they only spoke Spanish, they were, they were brought up as Catholic, they were you know, all the same things that all the other Hispanic families were doing, that's how they lived. And so they lost all traces of their, of their Indian heritage. Uh, and it worked the other way because there were, there were Spanish families that were taken captive by the Plains Indians and they were brought up as Plains Indians. So it worked both ways. But uh, we're, we're, we're very definitely mestizo. And, and that is the case with practically all the New Mexico families if you're an Hispanic family in New Mexico, I, 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 I haven't come across one, well, maybe one or two, that can say we're Spanish. And by Spanish meaning that they have no Indian blood in them. Uh, they're, they're far and in between, but not, not too many. Our, our families are mestizo. Yes. Rock or is Rock uh, Plymouth Rock was what? Uh, Plymouth Rock was 1607, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Inscription Rock, because, well, for one thing, the Indians were already doing their graffiti out there. But as far as the Spanish, uh, Juan de Oñate did his inscription there in 1605. So 1605 would come before 1607, 1608, before Plymouth Rock. So, yes, they were already. Our ancestors were already graffiti in that rock before Plymouth Rock. Yes. Questions? Answers? Behind you. Behind you. Behind you. Yes. No, I, I don't. Uh, I, I know for a lots of families from uh, from New Mexico, like the Baca, Sanchez, and all that. I know when they came up, but as far as the Cisneros, I don't know. I have not found a, a document that will tell us when our ancestors actually entered New Mexico from Mexico. I have not found one. Uh, it would have occurred either right after, towards the end of 1630, but before 1632. And, uh, but I have not found a record that says when we came into New Mexico. But by 1632, we were definitely here. The Cisneros were very involved in the, in the Pueblo Revolt. Uh, they were involved in the, the reconquest of New Mexico in 1692, 1693. They were involved in the, in the resettlement of New Mexico. They were involved in the... Uh, the, the battles up to 1696, on and on. They were, but I, I, there's a lot of detail there that's kind of hard to get into right now. But they, they, they were involved in everything that there was to be involved in. Oh, and one of the reasons was because it, it, 
there weren't all that many people in New Mexico at that time. As far as uh, as far as our ancestors, uh, you know, we talk about we, you know we, we think back, you know, that maybe there were a lot of people back then, but actually, in the 1600s, there were only about 2,000 called Spanish families in, in New Mexico, about 2,000 throughout the throughout the 1600s. In the in the 1700, in, by, in 16 in 1697. The Hispanic population of New Mexico was 1,680. That's not very big. So, so were they? So were they? So were they involved in, in everything that was going on? Well, yeah, because there was no one else. You know, they they, they were it. You know, so uh, and and then also, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, you know, when I'm doing their genealogy, so they say, well, uh, they'll tell me that they're a Chavez or a Martinez or a Baca, something like that, and, and I say, well. I, uh, so, so are you related to so and so in Galen or Albuquerque? Oh no, that's a different family. That's a different Chavez family. But once I do it, once I help them with their genealogies, it it always goes back to the one same couple. There was only one Chavez family that came into New Mexico. There was only one Baca family that came into New Mexico. There was only one Martinez family that came into New Mexico. There was only one Sanchez family that came into New Mexico. So when I'm doing the genealogies, they always end up being the same families. So now, you know, if you if you have a Baca last name, for instance, and you ask me to do your genealogy, that is just your names and dates and that kind of thing. In an hour and a half, I can give you 16 generations of your Baca family because it's all the same. It's all it's all we're, we're, we're all we're all the same family. We're all the same family. The C Cisneros and the S Cisneros. It does, that's, that, that means nothing because the, it, it, in the historic, if you read the records, and I've read thousands and thousands of records, and sometimes the name for the same person is spelled with an S, sometimes with a C. That Antonio Cisneros over there, that record says it's spelled with an S. No, no, it has no. It's the same person. It's the same people. It's the, it's all the same. The, 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 there is no reason for, for the difference between spelling the name with a C or an S. It just so happens how people spelled it phonetically because maybe they didn't know how to spell it. Because originally we know that it was with a C. Because it comes from Cisne, you know, Swan, okay? But even in Mexico, in the early 1500s, we already find records of the Cisneros being spelled with an S. And with a C. And with a C. You know, so... so in, the, in New Mexico, the same thing, spelled with a C. Even our grandfather is Kikula. My grandfather is Kikula. Before 1930, you look at his records, he spelled it with a C. By the 1930s, he was spelling it with sometimes with a C, sometimes with an S. And then after that, he was almost always with, a, with an S. My tío Federico, Uncle Fred, always spelled it with a C. His sisters, Patrocinia and Juanita and Viviana and Josefa, they all spelled their name with a C. So it, it just it has nothing to do with anything. It's not historical. It's, it's nothing. No, you won't find that. You know, I, I, won't, I, won't, I would not go online and do any of that history online, and I would not, and not certainly would not go to the mall and and, and, and buy any of their. Of their uh, coat of arms and all that. If, if, if you want to, if you, you know what, but coat of arms, you know, you, you can design your own and make your own design. You know, yeah, just make, just make your own. Because that, that's, that's all it means. Like, but that family crest over there does mean something to me because that actually tells the history of the, of the Cisneros family, okay? The one that's right next to it, with a, with a, with a checkerboard, that's the one that you find at the home. Yeah. Well, that's, that's actually the personal coat of arms of the Cardinal Francisco Jimenez de Cisneros, okay? But that was his personal coat of arms, and uh, no one else could have that coat of arms, okay? But if you want to, you can, because, you know, who, who's going to hold you back? And, and then if you're not satisfied with either, either one, you can design your own coat of arms. There's no, no reason you know, why, why you can't do that.
we, we find that uh, very often. In fact, uh, you know, I, I encountered the same thing. Uh, I celebrated my birthday on July 19th for the first 18 years of my life. And then after that, I start, started celebrating on July 20th because I, I well, I had to do with the draft. And, uh, <laughs> There was there was a there was a, a lottery for the draft back in the 1960s, and I wanted to make sure you know that I was born on the right date, and uh, so I looked into it, and, and when I looked into it, I found out that I was actually born on the on July 20th. I mean on July, yeah 20th, not not the 21st, yeah not the 21st. So, but that kind of thing happens. It's it's very very common, and and I asked my mother, well when was I born, and she said, oh, you know I don't I was the but the eighth or ninth born child, and she said, I don't know, I don't remember, I don't, and I don't care. <laughs> because it, it's, it's kind of, it's, it seems kind of natural that New Mexico was settled by people coming from the south to the north, okay? And, which means that, that they were um, uh, in Paso first, and then Socorro, uh, and the land is going up north that way, because they were coming from, from Mexico. But actually, the settlement of New Mexico uh, was first, well, it was first settled in, in the Santa Fe area, Santa Fe, and then the Santa Cruz area, and then later 1706 in Albuquerque. So all of these families actually that settled in, in La Jolla, Socorro, Belén, they're actually all originated in northern New Mexico. La Jolla, where a lot of our ancestors were from, like the Tafoyas and the Esquiveles came from Santa Fe. They had been stationed there, they were, they were military at the Presidio in Santa Fe. That's how they came in. Uh, the earlier people in La Jolla that had come in 1800 were from up north from the, the Santa Cruz to the area. The people from the land were from Santa, were from the people that founded the land were from, actually from the Santa Cruz, Chagma, and Chimayo area also. Uh, the people from the land were from, sorry, the people from Socorro were actually from Belen, but then, like I said, the people from Belen were from Lapdor. And so it goes. So it, it, it was not, it, the, the progression was not from the south to the north, it was from the north to the south. Okay, so that's kind of like, doesn't, if, if you don't know your history, that doesn't make too much sense. You know, but, uh, but there is a reason for all of that. Like, we don't have time I think I read that. Right. <laughs> was that the answer to your question? That's right. Okay. Thank you.